Okay, to start off, in order to do this, you're going to need quite a few pets. This whole thing requires you to be able to defeat five Pandarian trainers with two pets. There are a couple of ways to two pet all the trainers on this list, so if you don't have some of the ones listed maxed out, then just look up a different two pet strategy for that trainer. First, you're going to want to get a pet treat. If you happen to have the pet biscuit, the pet treat that increases XP by 50%, then you'll get your pet to 25 in the first four battles. Otherwise, just do one of the Beast of Fable dailies to get the pet sausage, the one that increases XP by 25%, then make sure your safari hat is on. Once you have your stuff ready, head towards the first trainer. This guide will have you flying down, then turning for the last one. The first trainer you'll be facing is a Thundering Pandarian Spirit. For this one, you'll need a snail, any breed, I use the worst breed snail in the video and do just fine, and a Dark Moon Zeppelin. If you don't have the Dark Moon Zeppelin, then this first one might take a few attempts, depending on your luck. I'll talk about the method that doesn't use the Zeppelin first, since it's a lot harder. Basically, you just start off with your level 1 pet, because the spirit will always use a stun that does no damage first. Then, switch to the snail and use dive. If the dive misses, just quit out and try again. You cannot do this if that dive misses. Anyways, after the dive, just use Acidic Ooze and Ooze Touch until the spirit is dead. There's no need to use a second dive. Then, when the sludge pet comes out, just use Goo and Ooze until your snail is dead. Then, bring out the mechanical Dragon Lean and just spam Breath until the Ooze is dead. You should only need to use 2 or 3 max. Then, you're on to the Tunneler. The mole won't attack you for the first two turns because he sets up his shield and burrows. So, just attack him twice and use Decoy on your third turn to block his burrow. Then, just attack until he's dead. If you do everything like I tell you, then the mole should only hit you once before he dies. Okay, now I'll go over the Zeppelin method real quick because it's way easier. With this, you just start off with the snail and just dive. You won't take any damage when you use dive, so if you miss, just quit out and try again. You don't have to heal because you didn't take any damage. Then just goo and ooze until the spirit is dead. When the ooze comes out, just use goo and ooze until your snail is dead. Then bring out the Zeppelin and spam missile until the ooze is dead. I made a mistake in the video and used decoy early, but it doesn't really matter. Once the mole rat comes out, just spam missile until it's below 600 health. Then use your explosion and kill yourself in the mole rat. The level 1 pet will, by default, gain all the XP since he will be your last pet alive even though he never actually entered the battle. Alright, now fly over to Aki the Chosen. She's due south. Now, Aki is actually a really easy fight and there are tons of ways to easily 2 pet this fight. I'm just going to show you one that works very well. For this fight, I use the Zandalari Ankle Render and the Clockwork Gnome. To start off, just bite until the Grasshopper is low, then spam Leap until you kill it. You want to make sure you kill the Grasshopper with Leap so you can outspeed the Dragon on the next round, because it will one-shot you. Then just use Black Claws and bring the Clockwork Gnome out after the Zandalari dies. Then just set up your turret and switch to your Carry Pet to take one hit. Your turret will be more than enough to kill the Dragon on its own thanks to Black Hall and Lightning Storm. Then, after your carry pet gets hit once, just switch back to the Clockwork Gnome and use Turrent off cooldown and Metal Fist until Whiskers is dead. Next, fly down to Farmer Nishi. Farmer Nishi is just as easy as the last guy. Now, Farmer Nishi uses two elementals and a beast type. In order to beat him, just bring a pet that can change the weather and can use an aqua type attack like a water strider. I, however, use my Droplet of Yasiraj, which is pretty hard to pet to get, so I don't recommend using him. A water strider is easier to get and does the same thing. For your second pet, you can bring along another aquatic type or mechanical. As long as your second pet has an aqua attack or a mechanical attack, you're golden. For this fight, you can switch in your carry pet at almost any point in the fight and you'll be fine. I decided to do this one in hard mode and have him go first. As soon as you can, bring in your pet that can change the weather and do it so the sunflower doesn't heal for as much. Then just spam your aqua move until the sunflower is dead. Once he brings out the root, he uses submerge right away, so this is probably the best time to bring in your carry pet to take a hit. Otherwise, just bring in your second Aqua type pet and wait for him to come back up and just kill him however. He dies pretty fast. Then, when he's on his worm, just take him out with your remaining two pets. Your Aqua type from the Sunflower will still be alive as well as the pet from the root. Once Nishi is dead, fly down to Moruk. This fight is probably the second hardest after the Thundering Spirit, but still not all that bad. For this fight, you're going to need a mechanical pet with a decoy and a fairy dragon. He starts off with the worm and uses his burrow on his second turn, so just hit him once and then use decoy. Then just attack him normally until the worm is dead. Then switch into your fairy dragon and use your life equalizer. The moth should hit you at least twice before you use your move, and really, the more damage you take before using it, the better. Then just moon fire and arcane blast until the moth is dead. Once he brings out his turtle, just keep spamming arcane blast until your fairy dragon dies. Now comes the tricky part. Basically, you want your mechanical pet to die, but not before doing a ton of damage, and you also have to make sure not to kill the turtle by accident. 
If you're using the Zeppelin, you can just use its explosion when the turtle is low and you're good to go. If not, just start passing once the turtle is low until it kills your pet, then bring in your carry pet. At this point in the guide, your pet should be able to kill the turtle while surviving at least two rounds. Once you clear this fight, you're in the clear because the next fight is another really easy one. Now, if you were using a pet biscuit, then your pet will be at level 25 after this fight, so you're done. If not, since pet biscuits are kind of rare and hard to get, continue on to the next tamer in the Jade Forest. For Huna of the Shrines, you're going to need the Fairy Dragon and a pet with a flying type move. Make sure your carry pet is out in front because he will be taking two hits this time around. Huna will bring out her Firefly first, who will use its two knots as its first two attacks. Just let your carry pet get hit by both of them and then switch to your fairy dragon. With your fairy dragon, just use Moonfire and then Arcane Blast until the Firefly is dead. Then when she brings out the snake, use your life exchange on it first, then spam Arcane Blast until the snake is dead. Once she brings in the turtle, just keep spamming Arcane Blast until the fairy dragon is dead. Then just bring out your pet with a flying type attack and just kill the turtle. He goes down very easy. And your carry pet should reach level 25 after this fight. And that's it. If you want to save the duration on your pet treat, you can just log out now, and it will save over until the next time you log in. I personally like to use the Pandarian trainers to power level pets that I want to use on one of my new teams because the whole process takes less than 30 minutes. But you do need to have a lot of things unlocked and a handful of already max level pets to do this, and it's not recommended for people who are just starting out. 